Today, I wanted to share something that might bring a sense of relief and empowerment as we journey toward emotional wellness. I mean, we've all experienced those sudden waves of fear or sadness or overwhelm. And the energy that accompanies intense emotions can feel overpowering. But please remember that all emotions are okay. They will naturally come and go, and there is no need to fear any emotion. And here's some encouraging news. Did you know that Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, a Harvard trained neuroscientist, explains that when we experience an emotion, there is a 90 second chemical process that occurs in the body. And after that, any lingering emotional response is sustained by our thoughts. Now, isn't that fascinating? And while that might be true, sometimes it can still feel challenging to navigate intense emotions when your limbic system is impaired or when you don't have a solid footing yet in down-regulating your nervous system. And you know, it's entirely possible that some of the intense emotions that you are feeling are heightened and still layered with limbic system reactions. So I thought I'd put together a short checklist for you to help discern whether an intense emotion might be related to limbic system impairment or if it's actually a response to a situational cause. So you could simply ask yourself, the following questions and answer yes or no. Number one, is the intensity of this emotion out of proportion to the situation? Number two, does the emotion linger long after the trigger is gone? Number three, is the emotion triggered by something objectively safe or neutral? Number four, do I feel stuck in this emotion even when I try to think positively or logically? Number five, is my body reacting physically? Like, am I feeling a tight chest or is my heart racing or do I feel nauseous or dizziness or a feeling of fatigue? Number six, have I felt this way many times before in similar situations? Number seven, do I feel a strong urge to avoid, escape, or control the situation to feel safe? So if you found yourself answering yes to these questions, it is helpful to remind yourself the reason why this might be happening. I mean, there is a perfectly rational explanation when you understand how the brain is working. In people with limbic system impairment or central sensitization, the brain's threat detection system becomes overactive or sensitized due to chronic stress, illness, or trauma. And the amygdala and related structures fire off alarms in response to perceived threats, whether they're real or imagined. And this can lead to disproportionate emotional and physical reactions. But this doesn't mean that the emotion isn't real or that the physical symptoms aren't real. It's just that your brain might be reacting as if there's danger, even when you're safe. So recognizing this pattern is the first step toward retraining your brain for calm and balance and creating emotional resilience. So what can you do during those 90 seconds or after to help ourselves move through it? Here are some simple strategies that can help you to navigate these intense emotions. Let's start with a simple but powerful tool. Name it to tame it. And that means just labeling what you're feeling. For example, I'm feeling anxious right now, or this feels like sadness. Naming it 
helps to take some of the charge out of it. It's like telling your brain, oh, I see what's happening here. And next, you might want to ask yourself, what else is true right now? That question can gently shift your focus. And even at a tough moment, there might be something else going on that brings you peace. Like, I don't know, maybe it's a cozy blanket or it's the sound of birds or even just knowing that someone you love is nearby. You know, finding that sliver of good can help rebalance your nervous system and bring some calm back. Another strategy is to visualize how you'd show up if you were feeling calm. What would you do? How would you move? How would you talk? Or how would you respond? And even imagining it starts to nudge your brain in a more regulated direction. And of course, get moving if it feels good and physically provide cues of safety for your brain. You know, you might want to try hugging yourself while gently rubbing up and down your arms or gently caressing the cheeks of your face. You know, these physical cues can send messages to the brain that you are indeed safe. Or maybe try listening to your favorite music or go for a walk or try doing some stretching or call a friend who lifts you up. But remember, all emotions are totally normal and they're not dangerous and they don't define you. They're just signals, and often they're fleeting. Over time, with rewiring your limbic system, you are balancing your emotional inner terrain and developing emotional resilience that will last a lifetime. So be kind to yourself, especially during those challenging times. Remember, you're doing great.